Warning, the following video is not meant to promote hate against the show itself. This is just a discussion video I finally wanted to produce for a long time now. Please do not go after shows or people I mention. This video may also include me cursing and or having brief meltdowns, which may not be suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. I repeat, viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone in the universe, my name is Redzi, and let's just say that this video will probably be a long discussion about my allegations about a show that has been migrating me since 2022. And yes, as you read the title of this video, I'm finally establishing another Hanazuki related video, and it's been near a year since I hosted the YTP club on it after enjoying the show Pirally last year. But later in 2022... I ended up having serious migraine problems that were related to the show, which ended up lasting for pretty much three months to be exact. And in December, I did do a stream on expressing my issues with the show and its franchise, but I deleted that video, so. I ended up having to look back at the ladder again in February while doing my quest on finishing a season of a forging cartoon. And just a few days ago, after removing all my stress and frustration on the show, I can now finally make this discussion video. Now, just to be aware, as stated in the warning section, there will be other shows that may be mentioned. I just want to strikingly inform that do not go after these shows that I mentioned. It will cause serious damage to my reputation for me, and I'll end up having to quit YouTube for a few months, which I really don't want to do. Now, enough about all that, and let's begin the discussion. So, some of you viewers are questioning right now, what is Hanazuki Full of Treasures, and why are you experiencing problems with the show? According to TV Tropes, Hanazuki Full of Treasures is a 2017 web animation digital series created by Hasbro and Titmouse, in which the show revolves around a childlike being called a Moonflower, who uses her emotional-based powers to protect her home from being abbreviated by a dark force known as the Big Bad. The franchise also consisted of a short film that played before the My Little Pony movie on October 6, 2017. The series itself was universally praised by viewers and managed to raise to 158 million views worldwide, but the likes-to-dislikes ratio was completely polarizing. Since most of the dislikes are obtained by haters in which they would either see the show as another bland girl show, such as Strawberry Shortcake, and assume that Titmouse was putting more time into the show like Mortal City would. Shockingly, the praised fanbase outweighs the hate base of the franchise in 2017, but in 2018, when Season 2 was informed it would be released in that following year, it didn't. In fact, Season 2 only made debut in some countries in the following year, most specifically Russia, parts of South America, and the United Kingdom. On March 23rd, 2019, Season 2 finally makes an American debut after almost a year, and on May 21st, 2019, Titmouse dropped out of the production of the series, leaving the series cancelled unpredictably. Slowly through late 2020 to mid-2021, certain producers who formerly worked on the series revealed a few production media that were originally going to be adjusted and included for the remainder of Season 2 which also include a storyboard for Season 3 as well. No other updates about the show's shopping were birded until 2023, when the series was brought by an Australian children's channel called ABC Me, which started broadcasting each episode per day until the so-called final episode of the series. There isn't any information about what the show's productions are up to at this time, but let's just predict that the show might get a promotion in 2024 by another forging company. Well, except this, because this is actually a big W or whatever. Anyway, moving on to the next chapter. In 2005, Nico and Hen Neke decided to launch their first franchise in Amsterdam, Neverlands. At that time, during the mid-2000s, the progress of the website would also consist multiple flash files to experiment with. Back on October 2nd, 2021, after watching the first episode at the Sirius, I decided to showcase some of the archive media that some users were not aware of back then. The website was slowly getting developed by time until 2010, in which Hasbro acquired the rights to the franchise while involving its two creators, Henneke and Nico in it. Over time, media would be traced publicly, including a planned game about dreams and overcoming nightmares. You can view most of the 2005 animations through the channel named Save Hanazuki Move It, which I'll leave a link at the bottom of the description. 
If some of you guys still have some knowledge in your 2021 year, I also established a channel called Hanazuki Full of Archives or something like that, which later got deleted by YouTube for unknown reasons, where I would post Hanazuki related high quality content. And by high quality, I meant getting real and creating enjoyable and hardworking content. Like, for example, the Honda Zuki YTP I made last year, which is unlisted. But I'll also leave a link down in the description if you want to watch it right now. It's really good. Anyways, back to the topic. A preview of Honda Zuki was also included in the 2014 United States home media release of Hasbro Studios' My Little Pony, which you can also see in the video displayed here. Yeah, that's just adorable. If you also want to glance at the other archive websites of the history of Hanazuki, they're also linked in the description below. But here's a little preview of the website if you don't have any time to watch this video, nor are going to view the websites at all. Anyways, long story short, just like with most cartoons, they would usually go through concerts first before being approved by a company to start a merchandise or pitch for a TV series. Once again, if you want to see more history content of this franchise, links are down below for entertainment. Now let's transition to our next topic, where I explain my perspective of the beginning of the series. Back in September 2021, when I started high school, I started to post more tweets related to the show on Twitter, and I also stated that I would watch the show for the first time to see if it was actually worth it, and turns out, it predictably was. After getting back from doing my weekly sunrises with my girlfriend on that day, I got to consume my breakfast, take a shower, play some games, ate lunch, and by the time it was 11.50 Eastern Daylight Time, I was preparing before the big moment where I would watch something pop on Twitter, and here's my reaction to just watching the first episode. <laughs> Let's go! As you can see, the start of the episode fortunately has unique writing, and the story is explained by a narrator, we all know her as the Moonflower Sister, Showing off the antagonist side called the Big Bad, in which vandalizes the vast majority of a moon, and suddenly. The episode also reviews Little Dreamer, and who also delivers treasure to moonflowers. However, he was also known for causing Hana's birth to be present once landed on her moon. In summary short, Hana lights on the little cute colorful bunnies, gets a treasure from the ladder, doesn't know what it does, escalating to chaos caused by the ladder, and gets angry at them. This is what causes the treasure to be triggered and grow into a mood-based tree, erupting with feisty. Then, Hana finds out what her true name is by some talking pyramid thingy, which I don't know the name of. Then, as stated at the beginning of summarizing, Kiyazuki was revealed, in which the duo is surrounded by mountains of treasures that were unplanted, and the episode just ceased. Now, let's just declare this episode was one of the best ways to begin a series. While most episodes of the first branch were just episodic ones at the start, but the later near the end did consist of plots revealing Sleepy Unicorn's nemesis and his polarizing side about Kiyozuki at the ninth episode. Luckily, the series was worth glancing more and would have been something I could have possibly watched when it came out. And so far, I only got through the first ten of the show, so to summarize those episodes, this shows that I enjoyed watching the show at first and also decided to try out their app to see if it makes its average pass. But the game's aspects and programming itself, yeah, we'll get to that later in the video. But now, let's get to the counterclaim of this video. It's negatives. As informed at the beginning of the video, this chapter may include me cursing and or having brief meltdowns. Remember, this is just my opinion about the franchise and its wrongdoings. Last chance, viewer discretion is advised for children who are watching this. Now, most of you viewers are thinking twice again. How's this series aggravating you? Now, we are finally going to break it down to show off so far the negatives of this show and its problems. Let's talk about the aspects of their app. The first thing that sometimes concerns me about the franchise is due to the fact that this game was its said title of it look rush, considering the fact that it was released at the start of April 2017, while the series was in progress. And when I tried it the first time in 2021, it had a decent start to a simulation game, but as in most games and simulation games, 
like Roblox or whatever, you would predictably obtain a tutorial on how to play the game. Just like in episode 4, you need to drag the treasure into the slow sand to free the Hemkas. At first, you'll get a review and animation of the treasure tree grown from the slow sand, just for yellow, but sadly it doesn't apply to the other animations to the other Hamkas when you rescue them. After finishing the tutorial, later in the gameplay, Big Bad comes around and makes a threat to one of your treasure trees, just like from the show. Now, since I'm still blindly watching the series, I haven't seen all the episodes of the first season, nor the second season, and I don't feel like watching the last few episodes just to try to fake I finished the series and attempt to cap it into the strip to you for views. Plus, I'd rather see no spoilers until I cry my lay there, so I'm just gonna assume that they made a rainbow beam to the story of the Big Bad or whatever. But in this game, you have to tap on the treasure tree to make the Big Bad vanish. Yeah, I thought this short mini game would have more aspects to make it more fun, but since this is a game targeted for 4 plus, I can see why they did this. Now, this is where things get more cringe, the other aspects of the game. The 3D aspects and modeling of the game are actually poor and rushed here, somehow. For example, the moon is severely nerfed, and the character designs including Hanazuki herself just looks like a Nintendo DS game beyond belief. Well, except for Chicken Plant, in which her design is surprisingly on the spot, somehow. And how even the programming used in this game sometimes lacks, for example. When you click on a Hamka to pet, and after petting the Hamka, you are pretty much stuck in a potential soft lock. Well, not really. Instead of, like, adding an exit button to stop interacting with it easier, you have to use your two fingers to zoom out of it like you're reading an article online. And one of the other issues that goes way deeper and shockingly might waste your time if you play it on iOS, because after playing and progressing the game for basically a week or two, your entire game data gets removed automatically and you're taken back to the tutorial, resulting in you to have to start your progress all over again, like it's your first time playing it. That right there is a 100% downright sin. There's no way that the developers spent working on a game for just a few months, and this was the result of it. In conclusion, Hasbro Berry did a good job on developing the game as they were cramming in most of its aspects in the franchise while the series was in progress. That I don't like. And that I wouldn't rather do if I want to start a franchise, which I'm doing this thing called Darren's Imaginary World. I would rather be organized and actually do things accurately here and out. While most episodes that are either serialized or episodic can remain average weight between their pros and cons, some episodes I do watch and brainstorm of what the plot would be before watching may be occasionally flawed from my perspective. For example, let's start with the infamous one, Episode 3, What's a Chicken Plant? In the start of the episode, the feisty tree- Wait a minute! Wait one second. What happened to the design of the tree? And why does it look altered compared to its original design from Episode 1? Okay, that's the first thing I'm calling out so far. Apparently in this exposition, Hanazuki finds a way to help the tree to stay alive until it reveals rainbow goop is needed for the treasure trees to stay healthy. However, in Earth terms, rainbow goop resembles as water to keep your plants healthy. Later in the episode, Hana greets a new character named Chicken Plant, who was at first she looked adorable and promised she would watch Yellow Hamka while Hanazuki continues to collect rainbow goop for the tree. It turns out revealing later that the chicken plant itself turned antagonist by swallowing Yellow into the body while Hana was gone. So Hana and the Hemkas try to find a way to get Yo Hemka out of the body. Chicken Plant resumes eating Hemkas, which include blue and lime green, only to reveal that she only likes foods that are yellow, causing her to reject other foods that are in different colors. As a realization, Hana instantly comes up with a plan, but the Hemkas run away, leaving her to do the plan herself. So she comes back with yellow goop and just... Oh. Yep, as what you just saw was considered a huge implication. Look, I understand that this was justified so that way she can save Yao from the chicken plant, but did they also have to make a close up of Hanazuki being drenched in goo? Yeah, that just makes me uncomfortable a bit. And just to add on to this, is no one gonna mention that Hana herself is actually the age of a born baby? 
but has the body of a 10 year old, I assume? Seriously, who thought that this scene was a good idea? Exactly, it isn't. And the creators already knew what they were doing with this damn scene. I know some other TV shows have done this too, but I don't really watch cartoons that much at the age I'm at. But it seemed like this would nearly ruin this for your children or someone with autism. Okay, I may have gone a bit too far with that joke. Some don't get sarcasm or jokes, but you may expect me to make a few edgy jokes or act sarcastically, like Mr. Enter would. Now, while this was justified, but not only that this may traumatize me, but some others may also either get, like, traumatized or even are comfortable looking at this. The first time I witnessed that scene had me traumatized back when I was 14, when I gave the series a go, as I didn't know what she was going to do with it, nor consider that this scene existed in the first place. If you also didn't know, I do have autism and attention deflect at the age where I'm at right now, and there will be times that I might find things confusing for the first time, or find things as an agatism out of nowhere. Oh, I'm sorry, am I revealing myself? Well, I apologize. Honestly, if this character didn't exist, we wouldn't have to see all this vor shit. And just to add sprinkles on top, we wouldn't have to see this shitty scene either. I don't have any other words right now. I also do need to confront this chicken plant animal thing. Now, here's what chicken plant is in a nutshell. So, one, she's always hungry. Two, she's very grouchy. Three, likes to swallow hamkas out of nowhere. Number four, doesn't get along with others. And five, tends to nag others with no end because apparently she doesn't know what to do nor why she existed in the first place. Usually when there are characters that don't have any good or interesting qualities and include just one or two things that the character would only do for the rest of the series, then it would be considered filler. Where's that word? I mean, if you look back at the episode, not only does she swallows yellow, but also swallows lime green and blue out of nowhere, which the segment of her swallowing blue was nothing but filler again since she was going to explain to Hana how her system works until she pulls it off again. Making not only me, but the audience more irritated at her behavior against the Hemkas. Also, if she only enjoys yellow food, why on earth would you consume other pets if she already knows that they're bitter? Like, what on earth is she trying to achieve by just committing vor from pets? Absolutely nothing. This cartoon is just one example of what vor is, as a lot of companies have done this same mistake too, with little to no criticism, or well, depends on the sh if the show's overrated, underrated, or just between those two. Perhaps some people would strongly criticize it, like Soros did and a few other people. While episode 3 isn't bad, it also isn't good either, and as mentioned before, I'm giving this a mixed bag rank due to the problematic character and the absolute downfalls of this episode. Now moving on with that, here's another episode I also have a problem with. Seeing Red. Hey look, we finally got another appearance of Kiyazuki! This segment starts with Kizuka on her moon, attempting to grow her very first treasure tree, but gets angry because she can't grow one herself. Now back on Hana's moon, we can see that Hanazuki's gardening again until Little Dreamer sneaks up behind her. Then, Hana gives Little Dreamer the tour of her garden until Wed attempts to get hands on Little Dreamer just so he can fly around him. And the other Hamkas wanted to get hands on Dreamer too after being exposed by the Red Hamka fever juice or whatever. Hana gets annoyed by the Hemka's behavior and kicks them out of her garden, only to then continue attempting to get a hands on Dreamer. This goes on for nearly 6 minutes of nothing but Hanazuki trying to protect Little Dreamer from the intoxicated Hemka's and trying to get back to their normal selves. Until Hana realizes that the Hemka's are intoxicated with Red Hemka fever, which comes down to one moral that she states that, to stop a Red Hemka, you need to think like a Red Hemka, which that's actually a good moral. So Hana decides to sacrifice herself by intoxicating herself with the so-called red Hemka juice, only to pour out more utter filler of not only the Hemkas being intoxicated, but also Hana herself being intoxicated with the fever. And then it gets even more adorable as you progress through this part. Hana just goes on a rampage, freaking the Hemkas out. Even Red was scared of her. So it turns out that Merle actually did work, but... Do you think that this episode would establish a change in the episode and you thought it would outgo the bad? No, it doesn't. So Hana heads back to her garden and tries to calm herself down by intoxicating herself with other Hamka juices, resulting in out of balance. You know, me saying intoxicated a lot just reminds me of actual drugs and in comparison of the Hamka juices from the episode. 
I believe that the side effects from the Hemka juice have similar symptoms from the actual drugs if you intoxicate yourself in real life. And from what I saw in this episode, Red Hemkin Fever just completely resembles actual cocaine, but in disguise as Red Hemka juice. Since cocaine has very similar effects from Red Hemka Fever, as it would make you feel very hyper and wild, which that's actually true, according to my research, I believe that Hemka juices in this episode are nothing but actual drugs being disguised as Hemka juices due to their similar side effects from IRL. Seriously, drugs in a children's cartoon? I mean, who thought making a console like this was good in a disguising way to just sneak in queer side effects of similar drugs that have those effects too? Oh well, I can't look at this episode the same way as before, and even when I watched it the first time, after realizing that it's scattered with utter filler and having drug implications, I mean, sure, Hana finally calms herself down and we actually get another Kiyazuki segment at the end of the episode, I'm now going to give this episode a 4 out of 10. Well, 4.5 out of 10 since the latter made another appearance, and the moral that Hanazuki stated, making this rank slightly lower than all of the first 10 episodes ranked earlier in this video. Now, before I transition to chapter 5, I want to also inform you that I've also half seen episodes after the 10th one just for a sneak watch. The episodes I half seen was episode 13 and 15, for starters, the near ending of episode 13 has this infamous scene where Hana seriously snaps against the brain, who's named Basil. But I'll just predict and believe that the moral here is, there's always a time to feel angry about someone who's being seriously unfair to you. Which, I know, this is seen in most cartoons and animes. Next up is episode 15, The Volcano of Fears, with a cancerous face for an edgy start, which is an uncanny and somewhat uncomfortable feeling. Anyways, to sum it up in a sentence, rather than just explaining it through, since some of y'all are probably getting amused at this chapter, is that Hanazuki only wanted a day off from the stress she had and was worrying about the danger that might happen to her friends next. I mean, while a facing and overcoming your fears episode was a clever and great idea, and the volcano of fears itself does make an amazing debut, the fact once you're in the volcano it visualizes your worst fears, but if you're gonna put the pin on the character who has a mix to negative reception, which is somewhat false, then this could lead to extreme polarization as there's probably some haters watching that episode, or this video as of right now. They're probably gonna be putting in the comments, haha, screw Hanazuki, or Hanazuki socks, or whatever the hell they can just think of. And still, look at the way they drew the nervous face. Frankly, I can think of a possible TV trope based off of the screen cap. Take that, critics. A possible definition. Once again, I don't feel like watching any more of this series for personal reasons, just to find out if this episode is actually bad or not, or if it has a moron in it. So if it does, just leave a comment and let me know. I'm just gonna transition to the next chapter now, because this chapter is kind of boring now. Well, this is where it all comes. The show that I honestly didn't originally want to watch, well, until now. Ever since I got into Hanazuki, when I surfed around Twitter, or even the Hanazuki Discord server, I would always see a mention of a cartoon I had no history of interacting or watching in my childhood due to the country I'm living in as of right now. Most users would rather believe that Max and Ruby was a take- Oops, I meant Ruby Gloom was a taken inspirement from the last mentioned show from this video title. Now, I would genuinely ask that what does a goth show have something to do with a serialized show? And how is it similar? Now hold up, before we go deeper into the iceberg, well there's no iceberg, some of you guys are wondering, what's Ruby Gloom? Well, allow me to explain in a brief way possible. A Canadian slash American animated TV series based off of the Mighty Fine Apparel line of the same name created by illustrator Martin Shu back in 2006. Which is also the same cartoon that I'm also rambling about on my channel lately, but after a few months of just going on tangents about it out of nowhere, it made me snap out of it and made me think, crap, what was I doing there? Why did I keep mentioning about the show? So basically, this is another show that some of y'all may remember in your childhood, I'm aware. But most people, including me, probably don't know what the show is. I mean, for me, when I first heard about this cartoon when it was referenced with the other show last year in 2022, I did find it interesting, and I also managed to watch the series for the first time. And I'll frankly admit this, 
This actually somewhat performed and executed better than Hanazuki. While it may not be the case completely, I did find this more enjoyable for my age. And looking at the other show, I still don't get the concept on why most people think that this goth cartoon has to be in comparison with Hanazuki. However, my theory on the reason why Ruby's being referenced recently is probably the fact that both shows had a similar start of the franchise. Let me break this down. Separately, Hanazuki creators Nico Stampo and Haneke and Ruby creator Martin Shu started off their concept as a franchise. Both separate creators also had a toy line from merchandise to flash games to news articles, etc. Until both separates licensed in the cartoon series later in the years. But both separates did have some flaws due to the treatment or aspects of the both franchises that I'm talking about. Like in Ruby's, there's this infamous offensive episode called Uber Gloom, which I'll explain in the next video essay. Or even in Hanazuki app, as discussed earlier, and a bunch of urban flaws in comparison that I'd rather not explain about as of right now. Martin unfortunately had more bad luck with his franchise considering that he wasn't able to work on the TV series as Nirvana, the company that worked on the cartoon, can only employ Canadian actors and employees for the production, meaning that Martin was left out of the team and couldn't be able to work on it. Which is pretty sad as the TV series was done in another country than just the United States. Also, for a shocked fact, Martin Shu actually wanted Ruby Gloom to be distributed on American TV characters, but most of the executive producers of the channel rejected it as they considered it was, oh, too dark and scary for an American audience. And hell, even Cubo itself rejected the series. Well, not Cubo, I don't know if they had an interest in distributing it, considering that they ceased operations in 2021 due to them being acquired by EW Scripts. And in 2018, Martin Shu officially loses the full rights to Ruby Gloom since the company Mighty Fine, which held the copyright for the franchise, was acquired by another company called Mad Engine, which I don't know who they are. And even Martin himself declared that he wanted to reboot the series, but for him, he already moved on from the franchise. And for Hanazuki, it was originally going to be a web series until 2018, when they privated all the episodes under official YouTube channel, remaining with official promos and clips of it. The series did air on Discovery Family in the United States in December 2018, and Season 2 in March 2019. And as mentioned before, while Season 2 was in production, Titmouse left during production, since they had to make room for other shows they were established on. Long story short, it had a flawed treatment the same way as Ruby Gloom did, but slightly different because... Yeah, you know why. Long story short, it had a flawed treatment the same way as Ruby Gloom did. However, there still is a reason why I started watching this later in 2022, and even I started liking it more in 2023. Suddenly, it for me with severe autism, I pretty much overdid it later on. But still, if you want to compare Ruby Gloom to something that actually may look very similar, then compare it to this. Yep, the one and only underrated Brazilian cartoon starter called C I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'll just say I'll just translate it to Yellow Woodpecker Ranch. That I'll also explain in a newer video essay as well. Anyways, I don't feel like getting too off topic. I'd rather focus on what needs to be discussed as of right now. So in conclusion, the comparison of Hanazuki and Ruby Gloom isn't too similar to Hanazuki as for Ruby it's goth. And for Hanazuki, it's sci-fi, but I'll conclude it had similar kickstarts. And now, time to transition to our last chapter. Now, how should I conclude this? After discussing and looking back all the aspects, the pros, cons, and even the similarities with this franchise, I can conclude that while the series isn't bad and unwatchable, it also isn't good either due to the treatment it had with it and with its flaws from the app to the web series. But I do still see concerns and problems about how it's treated and the way the fanbase is treating it. Like this one last thing I'll mention is that there's this bootleg movie called Hanazuki Out of This World which features a 40 minute cringely made animation which couldn't have worked if they used actual animation rather than just Vion which is an overrated and cringe animation software because yeah, you know why. And there are others that you might see out of nowhere, but that's out of the topic. However, this doesn't mean you should not watch the series. 
I honestly do find this series very underrated and impressive at most times, and I would actually like to see this get more attention from others. This series is also serialized too for those who have big interest in it. So if any parents or any young children might be watching this video right now out of nowhere, then this show is for you to watch. Just don't watch the four the volcano episode. Oh, is that taken out of context? Oh, this sounds good. Great job. Oh, okay. Just say your outro and you'll be finished. And so with that finally finished, thank you everyone for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Comment if you want to suggest or leave me feedback. And subscribe for more random content. And I'll see you, ladies and gentlemen, in the next video. Before I end the video, I would also say that I humbly apologize if I haven't been posting any content lately. I do have personal issues right now, and I have been stressing lately with my health. But I'll still be around in social media, even if I'm not posting anymore. Also, one last thing. I actually don't have a girlfriend yet.